gas exchange occurs between the lungs and the blood. So this is external respiration. And it also occurs between the blood and the tissues, internal respiration. So recall that external respiration and internal respiration were mentioned at the very beginning of this chapter. And both of these processes, they are subject to the properties of the gas and the composition of that gas that we're breathing. So this portion of the chapter includes a couple laws. There's one called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. And this is very simple. It actually is just determined by the sum of all pressures exerted in the gas. And so the reason this is important is because there's a certain percent of the gas, which is oxygen. So this takes into account atmospheric pressure, which remember, recall, is 760 millimeters of mercury. And approximately 78, 79% of that air is nitrogen. And so that would be calculated by simply multiplying the percent as a decimal times 760 millimeters of mercury to get 596 millimeters of mercury, 597. And we don't really care too much about that because we're concerned with the oxygen. And oxygen is about 21% of our air. So that is calculated to approximately 159, 160 millimeters of mercury. So that would be the amount of pressure of oxygen within atmospheric gas. And this is going to decrease at higher altitudes. So let's look at this chart, which is showing the partial pressure of each of these. On the left is atmospheric sea level. And on the right is the, what happens in the alveoli. And this is very, the, the percent we're going to see and the partial pressure is going to change a little bit from the left of the chart to the right of the chart. So for nitrogen, it remains the same because there's no nitrogen that should enter into the um, systemic circulation. Oxygen, however, is 160 in the air, but in the alveoli, it's 104 millimeters of mercury because some oxygen has diffused it's entered into circulation before reaching the alveoli. And the carbon dioxide, there's a very small amount of it in the air. And the partial pressure of that is 40 millimeters of mercury in the alveoli because carbon dioxide is essentially going the opposite direction. It's going from the pulmonary capillaries into the alveoli. And oxygen and carbon dioxide are the two gases that we're going to be concerned with. So external respiration now is the process that's occurring at the pulmonary capillaries, the respiratory membrane specifically, and it's influenced by three main factors. The first is the partial pressure gradients and gas solubilities. The thickness and the surface of the respiratory membrane so these three factors are very important in affecting pulmonary gas exchange. So for example, if the thickness or the surface area of the respiratory membrane, if the thickness is increased, that's gonna make it more difficult for external respiration to happen. So our first factor, the partial pressure gradient and gas solubilities, the venous blood, it has a partial pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. This would be the blood that's coming from the right side of the heart into the pulmonary capillaries before oxygen is diffused into the blood. However, after oxygen diffuses into the blood, the oxygen goes from the alveolus into the blood. Now the partial pressure is 104 millimeters of mercury and that's traveling back into the systemic circuit, the left side of the heart. And it usually takes about 75 seconds for this to happen. And we'll look at a chart of that coming up. The partial pressure gradient for the carbon dioxide though is less deep. And one big difference for this 
is how carbon dioxide travels in the blood. It's quite different than how oxygen travels in the blood. So in order to ensure adequate oxygenation, it's important to increase one's depth of respiration. Remember that chart that we looked at earlier. So this slide is showing the partial pressure gradients for gas movements. And I'd like you to notice the external respiration first. So on this slide, we see the external respiration. And in this example, carbon dioxide is leaving the blood. So the carbon dioxide is going to de be decreased in the pulmonary veins. So we see that now the carbon dioxide partial pressure is um, 40 millimeters of mercury. However, in the arteries, the venous blood, which is, remember, the deoxygenation, so it's like venous blood, it's, the partial pressure is going to be much higher for carbon dioxide. But it's not as steep a difference as for oxygen. It goes from 45 to only 40. And the main reason for this is, again, how carbon dioxide travels in the blood. So the main numbers for you to know for external respiration are that in the pulmonary arteries, the partial pressure of oxygen, the PO2, is 40 millimeters of mercury. After it picks up oxygen in the pulmonary veins, there's a partial pressure of PO2 of 100 millimeters of mercury. And the carbon dioxide goes from 45 to 40. It goes in the opposite direction. So the opposite then would happen for internal respiration. So the oxygenation that we just looked at it during external respiration that occurs in the pulmonary capillaries should take about 0.75 seconds in total. And again, we see the partial pressure of oxygen in, from the pulmonary arteries as 40. It picks up oxygen. And now in the pulmonary veins, going back to the left side of the heart now, there's a partial pressure of 104 millimeters of mercury. Now factors that could change this, that could make this take longer, for example, would be things like the thickness of the respiratory membrane. So these are, this is the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the opposite direction occurring at the respiratory membrane. So again, thickness and surface area of the respiratory membrane are going to affect this. And hopefully the respiratory membrane is extremely thin. It should be about 0.5 to 1 micrometers thick. And so there's a large surface area for diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the effective thickness of this respiratory membrane it can increase significantly when the lungs become waterlogged or edematous. If there's extra fluid, that's going to increase the thickness of the membrane. And normally, again, there should be 0.75 seconds where the blood picks up the oxygen as it goes from the pulmonary arteries to the pulmonary veins. But if there's one of these homeostatic imbalances, the body tissue suffers from oxygen deprivation. Also, there are certain pulmonary diseases that reduce the surface area. Remember, in healthy lungs, there should be a very high surface area. However, in things like emphysema, the walls of the alveoli break down and there's less surface area. Also, for tumors, mucus, inflammatory materials that blocks the gas flow actually getting in to the alveoli.